by General CDs Part 14. Hi hi everybody and welcome to part 14 of a look at my general CD collection. So we're moving on to that block of shelves there. Uh, roughly 125 CDs. Oh, there's some doubles in there. Um, yeah, so these are just normal CDs. They're not compilations, they're not soundtracks, they're not anything Prince related because that's all separate. They're not any signed CDs because they're all separate. Otherwise they're just normal albums that you would buy in a shop basically more or less. Um, let's get cracking. So first up we have Bowie the Singles Collection. So this was the first Bowie I owned. It was second time I joined the Britannia Music Club. So I joined it once when I was quite young, uh, back in the cassette days, then left and then when I went to university and got myself a CD player I rejoined and this was one of my five introductory CDs for a pound or whatever the offer was. One of the reasons I picked it was because it was a double CD so more for my money but Bowie was somebody who I always liked but I didn't really know a lot of his music and most of what I did know was sort of the 80 you know the Let's Dance era stuff where it was big hits but not necessarily so commercially popular uh, particularly then going on to you know, tonight and never let me down and what have you. So I didn't know a lot of his stuff. Um, bought this, really enjoyed it. This sort of kept me going for a long time. Never really felt the urge to get any more until I saw him live at the Net Aid concert and he blew my mind to just for Pritz and so he walked on the stage and thought, David fucking Bowie. And that was it. I went out and started getting all his albums. But this is a really good compilation. Uh, some of them are singles edits, I believe, but cover throughout his career up to, uh, what was this, 80, uh, well this was 93, but there's n the latest, or oh, there is Day In Day Out, which was mid 80s. But yeah, good compilation. This is Supernatural, it's by Santana, uh, quite a recent charity shop purchase within the last year or so. This is the this is the album of um, collaborations with big artists, well biggish artists. Um, Smooth featuring Rob Thomas was the big hit that everybody knows from this but he also Dave Matthews, Everlast, Lauren Hill and CeeLo, Wycliffe Jean, Manor, whoever Manor is, and Eagle Eye Cherry and Eric Clapton all feature on this. It's a good solid album um, I like Santana, but it stuff does tend to drag a bit to me. Uh, this is Bowie, this is a little run of Bowie here. Uh, this is Black Tie White Noise, this is just a normal single CD release. Uh, underrated album, I enjoy it a lot. This is Earthling. Again, this is just the normal release from 1997. Nothing fancy about it, no extras or anything on it. Uh, very drum and bassy, but good album. This is Hours. Uh, I really love this album personally. This is sort of when I was get really got into him. It was Hours period, so I have a soft spot for it. But I think it's... I, just do really love this album. This has got a nice lenticular sleeve. A uh, couple of compilations. Best of David Bowie, 1969 to 74. Uh, there's a couple of bits on here that weren't available elsewhere, like his version of All the Young Dudes. Wasn't on any of the easy to find regular albums at that time. I know, and Velvet Goldmine as well. I know they appeared as extra tracks on the Ryko disc releases of the albums, but they'd been deleted by the time I was getting into collecting the albums. Uh, and I also picked up 74 to 79. I think John I'm Only Dancing Again was the only rarer track on this one. This is 
his soundtrack to Buddha of Suburbia. Very strong, very underrated, sort of got lost being a soundtrack. But this was the start of his renaissance after Tin Machine. Uh, the title track is excellent. Uh, tonight, there's some good tracks on here. The production lets it down, but Loving the Aliens is a great track. Blue Jean is one of my favourite tracks, to be honest. Um, his cover of God Only Knows is terrible. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's one of his worst albums, but it's still good because it's Bowie. This is the soundtrack to Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders of Mars, the motion picture. So this is the um, Hammersmith Odeon farewell concert where he said goodbye to Ziggy Stardust from 1973. Uh, this has subsequently been redone and is in one of the box sets. But obviously when I bought this, that wasn't the case. Great concert. This is the soundtrack to Labyrinth. Uh, Bowie's track, tracks, Bowie's tracks on here were in the last box set, but this has got the score as well. Um, it's a film I love. And Bowie's tracks on this are excellent. Underground, Magic Dance, Chilly Down, uh, As the World Falls Down. Within you, I can't remember, but certainly the first four are excellent. Okay, away from Bowie. Uh, this is Ian Jury, Lord Upminster. So this was his solo album from 1981. Uh, it's not as good as his Blockhead's work, but he's always entertaining. Um, this has got Spasticus Autisticus on it, which is a great song. And there's various bonus tracks on here, an interview and some remixes and what have you. Yeah, not his best work, but very good. This is Linda McCartney, Wide Prairie. Uh, it's recently been reissued on vinyl, on clear vinyl, I think it was, or white vinyl, one of the two. Uh, I really enjoyed this, surprisingly. Um, it's, you know, it's quite light fluff, but it's enjoyable light fluff. And of course, you know, pulls all over it. But yeah. I enjoyed that. Uh, a bit more Bowie. Uh, this is Never Let Me Down. Uh, again, it's the production lets it down, really. The, again, the last box set, they did a new version of this, which was a lot better. But Day In, Day Out, I really, I've always really liked. That's about it, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, you know, Zeros is actually quite a good track. You know, they're, 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 again, you know, it's weaker Bowie, but it's still very good. This is I Select Bowie. This was given away with the mail on Sunday, and it was ostensibly to promote the, promote the live Santa Monica 72 CD. Uh, this has got all sorts on it. It's got Life on Mars album version, Sweet Thing Candidate, Sweet Thing Re Reprise, album version, Beaulieu Brothers album version, Lady Grinning Soul album version, uh, Win album version, Summer, which I'm not sure where that came from. It was recorded between 1976 and 79. Uh, Teenage Wildlife album version, Repetition album version, Fantastic Voyage album version, Loving the Alien album version, Time Will Call MM remix, uh, remix by Mario J. McNulty from 2008 and Hang On To Yourself Live from the aforementioned Santa Monica album. Uh, still more Bowie. This is One Outside. So this is the full album, not the excerpts from, but um, it was on vinyl, obviously. It's a concept album. It's about a detective called Nathan Adler. Um, yes, it's a good album. It's one I need to listen to again, actually. I think I've only heard it once or twice. It's, you know, you need to concentrate on it. Uh, Heart's Filthy Lesson was on this, it was a single, it was 
great track, Hello Space Boy, ditto. Uh, those are the two singles. Yeah, I think they were the two. Strangers When We Meet, I think, was also, might have been a single as well. But yeah, good album. Okay, this is J-Lo, a.k.a. Uh, I primarily got this because it came signed. The, it was one where, I think it was Newbury Comics I got it from. And it came with a separate signed booklet, which is in a folder, which I have filmed a video for. As I record this, I don't think that video has been uploaded. But by the time this goes up, ooh, it may have. But if not, it will be up in a week or two after this, I think. Uh, what was singles from this? Not sure. Can't remember. It's good solid. I like J-Lo. I've got a couple of her bits. Um, she released a... Oh, what's it called? The Real Me, R-W-E-L, I think. Which was a DVD with a handful of videos on it. And an EP that was new tracks in between the Real Me, R-E-A-L Me album and the next one and it has a couple of tracks on that I really liked and I've got that anyway. Um, yeah I don't mind J-Lo at all. I don't remember much about that album. Okay this is Queen Forever, this is a compilation that came out 2014. Uh, it's primarily their love songs. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean they're ballads, I mean Crazy Little Thing Called Love's on here. Uh, it's a, no, well, that is, um, 39, not really a ballad, uh, yeah, most of it is proper ballads, I suppose, looking at it, uh, play the game-ish, in the lap of the gods, revisited, not really at all, um, the miracle again, not really, but yeah, um, the sort of selling point on this was that it had three brand new songs. Uh, there Must Be More To Life Than This with Michael Jackson, Let Me In Your Heart Again and Love Kills. And they sort of start it and then it goes into the familiar stuff. So I mainly picked it up for those three tracks. But it's a nice compilation, made a change from the Hits compilation and the Rocks one. Uh, this is one of the Paul McCartney archive collections which I've shown plenty of in previous videos. This is Wings at the Speed of Sound. Uh, so this one, you may recall from previous ones, there's sort of inconsistencies as to how much is in each of these standard versions. There's the big archive books, we've got loads of stuff in it. Uh, this has got... There's the list. Um, so it's got the remastered album, uh, Let Me In's on that, Silly Love Song's on that, and then bonus audio is, which is on the second disc, is demos and different versions. Nothing outstanding, oh, no, no separate singles, you know, non-album tracks like there have been on some, but yeah, good album. All Macca's stuff is good, in my opinion. Different grades of good, but like Bowie, it's all good. Uh, this is Monkey Journey to the West. So this is an opera written by Damon Albarn of Blur and Gorillaz and The Good, The Bad and the Queen and myriad many other projects, Africa and Express. Um, I've got this purely for Damon's involvement. Uh, it's got a big thick booklet in it. I've only listened to it once and I don't remember much about it, but it was okay. This is a best of the stylistics. I was sort of vaguely aware of the stylistics. Then Prince covered Betcha by Golly Wow. Um, and that made me want to get this and sort of see the rest of their stuff. I do really like their stuff. The falsetto sometimes is a bit too much. But there's some great tracks on here. Um, Can't Give You Anything But My Love. You Make Me Feel Brand New. I'm Stone In Love With You. Uh, Stop Listen To Your Heart, Betcha by Golly Wow. No, no, it's the saddest word. Seven dollars and you break up to make up. You owe everything. 
all great, great songs. Another Ian Jury. This is a 4,000 Weeks Holiday by Ian Jury and the Music Students. And that is literally more or less what the band were. It was a group of young musicians who were pretty much music students. Uh, nothing well known on here. Again, not, you know, a patch on his Blockhead's work, but still a very good album. Uh, this is Beatles On Air live at BBC Volume 2. So this was the second volume of the BBC sessions. Uh, 37 previously unreleased performances plus 23 speech tracks. Yeah, I mean if you're a Beatles fan you have to own these really. They're, you know, perfectly enjoyable listening. Not as good as their own albums obviously and you know, it's mostly covers but not entirely. This is Chrissy Hines Stockholm, so this was her first solo album. I mean it's it's pretty much a Pretenders album because Pretenders really are Chrissy Hind and whoever she decides to record with. Uh, I think the only constant is the drummer and his name has just gone out of my head. Uh, it is oh, that's clicking and whirring. Yeah, it's a good album. Um, I bought this and it came with a signed print, which I haven't shown yet on my videos. Uh, Martin Chambers, the drummer, who's, pretty, as I say, pretty much been a constant, if not has been a constant. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's a good album. You know, if she'd stuck with Pretenders on it, you'd think it was a Pretenders album. This is Khaleesi's Food, I think it's called. Although I can't see anywhere where it's written. Yeah, it's written on the inside. Album Food. Uh, again, I've got this mainly because it came with a signed poster, which again I haven't shown yet. I've only listened to it once. I don't remember much about it other than it being fine. Oh, that's where it says Food. There's the F-O-O-D. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it was it was okay. I like Khalees. So I haven't got much of her stuff. I've sort of got that and then a couple of odd tracks and compilations, I think. But yeah, it's all right. I seem to recall. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs Education, Education, Education and War. Uh, was this the one that had the multiple? can't remember. It was one of her albums. No, I don't think it was this one. Um, they've never been the same since the drummer left, who was the main songwriter. They're all enjoyable, their albums. And finally for this video, this is Lily Allen's Sheezus. So this was her third album, I think, from 2014. Um, she sort of poo-pooed this album subsequently. But it's got some good stuff on it. Um, Air Balloons Fluff, but Enjoyable Fluff. URL Bad Man was very good. Hard Out Here was good. Uh, I did see her on this tour. Very enjoyable. But I'm a big fan of Lily's. Uh, this has got this version's got a bonus five track CD, which includes her cover of Summer Only We Know that was used in the John Lewis advert, the Keen song. Yeah. Lily Allen's Sheezus. Okay, so that's it for part 14. Uh, if you haven't seen previous parts, they're all on the playlist. As will future parts. I'll see you on another video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.